Hello, and welcome to Of a Certain Age with Cody Maurice Doggett and Steve V. Rodriguez. Today, we're talking about mental health and are we where we want it to be? So I have to pose a question to you, Steve. Are yeah. you where you want it to be? I think that's such an interesting question. And the answer is no, because I'm always growing and layering things on like this show, right? So yeah. I did, uh, you know, soon we're going to have a guest coming on that does energy work, energy healing. Mm -hmm. And I just did one of his sessions. And one of the things on there was I was focusing on career and he was asking me just that question, are you having issues with your career right now? And I said, it's actually a really exciting time. There's a lot of opportunity out there that's going in my direction, a lot mm -hmm. of tools that I could grab that have come my way recently. And so I think what's really cool about this is focusing and prioritizing to get to where I ultimately want to be. But I guess, and then I want to get your <laughs> feedback on too, I don't know that there's ever a pinnacle moment where you are exactly where you want to yes. be. Hopefully there's some goals that you are chipping away at that you're getting to, but um, a work in progress for sure. Definitely going on the same path of podcasting and I have some newer things that I want to layer in that are only going to hopefully affect my career in positive ways, financial ways as well, more more um more affluent ways maybe mm -hmm. we say but yeah. i think that's where i'm at with it currently right now but always trying to grow how about you well if you would have asked me about oh, am i where i wanted to be when i was when i was thinking about it when i was five years old then the answer is definitely no because i <laughs> wanted to be a, a firefighter back then and i'm clearly oh. not <laughs> But if as as I've grown, and like you mentioned, as you grow, things change. But as I have grown up, I definitely have set goals for my life. And I am nowhere near where I thought I was going to be. And honestly, that is okay with me. I, I feel like what you were saying has so much resonance and it provides so much value that when you grow your ideas of what you want and how you to fulfill your life it has can take on deeper meaning for you so i think that for me personally i am not where i wanted to be and i feel like for the first time in my life that's actually okay i feel like where where I am is perfect for who I am. And I have, like you said, we have goals that we're working on every single day. And I think that that is the most important thing. Yeah, being motivated, I think is so important. I've had so many iterations of career. I think we've talked about it in the past on our other show, but mm -hmm. I worked in radio right out of college. And in one since this is a form of radio, talk radio, if you will. Oh, yeah. But I've worked in so many other fields, but this is the one that I really love that is continuously presenting me with newer opportunities that I continue to want to be motivated for and to go down that path. But I think that is one of the keys. We're going to have a guest on a little bit later on the show, Nathan Harrington, life yeah. coach. And, you know, hopefully he'll offer some insight. If you are at a place where you are wondering you're not happy in your job or you are stuck and maybe you don't know what you want, I think I've been fortunate, it sounds like you have as well, to be able to be motivated to continue to grow, to find the tools to nurture where the direction of the career that we want to flourish. Yeah, I hear that totally. And I find that what is what we're doing with this not only is providing us with opportunities in life, but it's also providing us with opportunities to grow within ourselves. And I think for me, that is such an important thing. And it is why I actually it's a it's a it's a value that I hold in life and that it's something that I really hold to very dear to me. So that is super important to me. 
Yeah, let me pose a question now to you, though. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Have, <laughs> have you ever, though, and I'm assuming even though we're always working on goals, I can answer this. The answer is yes. Have mm -hmm. you ever questioned, am I going down the right path? Am, should I scrap everything? Is this, I'm sure we've had lows in our career lives where we thought, is this really the direction I should be going? And my answer is I definitely have. But when I did, you know, we communicate with so many people on when we're doing our podcasting, I talk with a lot of people. And whenever I have one of the things I've done is just to kind of sit still and meditate and see what speaks to me. And that has been one way to help keep me moving forward into am I where I am? And am I going down the right path? But what about you? Have you questioned your career path, mm -hmm. the direction that you've gone in? Oh, 100%. I don't I think it's part of the human experience to question whether you're going down the right path, whether it's with a partner. As you were talking, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this I pointed out this and that and this yeah. and that." So, it could be with uh romantic relationships, it could be professional relationships, but speaking purely from my perspective, it happened a lot more with my professional life. I found myself going down one path and not really being fulfilled. I don't know if that's the right word. I feel like fulfilled is, is as close as I'm going to get uh, with, with where I was going and the direction that my career was taking me. But in all of that, I have found that it opened doors to other avenues and other things that did fulfill me and did provide meaning in my life. So does that make any sense? Does that make sense? It definitely does. F finding fulfillment is so important. Being satisfied with what you're doing is so important. Having a career or a job that's sustainable that you can actually make a living off of is very important. And I think the key is to, and we'll find out more from Nathan, but yeah, to find ways that you can integrate those three things so that it's a sustainable career path that is going to make you happy. And yeah. as we all know, That's not every job is going to be roses and, and candy every single day. In fact, oh, most of man. them aren't. There's challenges. You're going to question things. You're going to think you're going down a certain path. And you also have to be willing, I think, to accept failure too, if one thing isn't working, Ooh. yeah, when to accept that so that, you know, but it's all about finding what you're good at and then you finding your passion and then finding it, making a way for it to be sustainable. I hear that. And the whole failure thing super resonates with me. I am so afraid to fall flat on my face. It is something that has held me back for so long. And just now am I finding my footing and saying that, you know, it's okay if I'm not perfect every hour of every minute of the day. So, oh, wow. That was so great. Thank you, yeah, Steve. Yeah, no. I mean, I've failed at endeavors that I thought I, we put so much time and energy in and they just didn't come to fruition mm -hmm. and they weren't going to be sustainable. And it was tough at the time when you put so much of your blood, sweat and tears into something and it doesn't pan out. You do have to accept that. You also have to explain to people too why it didn't work out because people are going to ask, but yeah, you at least you know you tried and you did go down a path and you know you can put that aside now and move on to something that will be sustainable and actually successful. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. Oh, we're going to have a great conversation. Right. Welcome back, darlings. Now we have Nathan Harrington, life coach extraordinaire, back with us, and we're going to be discussing where we are in life. Hi, Nathan. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Cody. Thanks, Stevie. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So, Nathan, I have the first question for you. Are you where you thought you would be in life? Oh, absolutely not. 
<laughs> just get no that way. out. <laughs> Where no did you way. think you would be in life then? Oh, well, I could look back at different sort of phases. Like when I was 18 years old, so I'm 41 now. Okay. So when I was 18, I probably thought I would have I would be a like a university professor, let's say. Oh, wow. Right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, then if I look at when I was like 28, I thought that I would uh, be married and own a house and have kids and all of the heteronormative <laughs> things that, yeah. uh, that right. uh, sometimes we want, even though, you know, we maybe don't actually really want those things. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I, I, this kind of more broadly answers the questions is, you know, my life has taken so many unexpected turns uh -huh. that I could have never known to want the life that I have now, you know, um, which I don't, I don't, in some ways that's like, wow, so it's, it almost feels like magical or miraculous that, that life can go that way. But there's also sort of just this like factualness about that. It's like you can have whatever expectations that you want about life, but, you know, shit happens and yeah. life ends up going in a completely different way. So, uh, yeah, that's, so yeah, that's, I, I'm not where I expected. And those are kind of the places where I expected I might be. And I guess I'm sort of sharing the learning that it's like, your expectations are just one part of the equation. Yes. Well, you know, piggy, piggybacking off of that, I mean, you said you're 41. And you I read on your Instagram, I was struck by this, you wrote, as a, at the time, I guess you were 40 year old, um, as a 40 year old who is in the process of completely reinventing himself. Uh, and it was in reference to somebody that said they did this at 52, they did something else at 42, all these life achievements, but it was all somewhat uh, middle aged. And then you write, let's, um, what is you, you go on to say, that let go of the story, folks. What if your biggest accomplishments and your greatest days are still out in front of you? That is such great advice. Many of our listeners of a certain age are wondering, is it too late? And what do you often tell many of your uh, the people that you coach? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one thing that I get a lot of juice out of for myself and for my clients is thinking about um, social constructs. Mm-hmm. Um, and in a lot of ways, the, the expectations that we have for like where we should be at li in life, mm -hmm. we didn't come up with those, right? Like, like I said, like the heteronormative sort of picture that I had of, of myself, like I never sat down when, like when I was 25, I didn't sit down and go, hmm, you know, if I could have anything that I wanted in life, mm -hmm. right? If I could just like completely from a blank slate come up with the best life I could imagine. I, I never did that. I didn't do that. Like the picture of the, the you know, the, the White House and the picket fence and the husband and the children and all of that, that was just a completely inherited vision for my life, mm -hmm. right? So when I say like a social construct, I mean like, yeah, most of our expectations are not our creation. Right. They're not like our invention. And so, yeah, I'll have like just seeing that for a client to just see that that is something that they inherited from this, you know, the the environment, the culture that they were born into. Just seeing that can free them up to go, huh, OK, then maybe I don't need to use those to measure my success and to determine if I'm going to be satisfied or dissatisfied with where I am right now. Does that wow. make sense? It, it definitely, definitely does. does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we are the same person, Steve. We just totally <laughs> did the same thing at the same time. Right? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. It definitely sounded like both of y'all. <laughs> um, so 
That is so interesting because I've had experiences where going into a certain thing, I thought it would go one way, but living through it brought up different perspectives and insights about myself. Um, what are your experiences with pivoting and kind of adjusting your direction in life? Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, I could look at, multiple seasons of my life and see examples of that. I'll go with the most recent one. So I was the head of team development for a small chain of yoga studios here in Houston and also in Denver for almost a decade. And uh, when I left that job, um, I wasn't completely sure what I was going to do. And I, through just some conversations with some sort of, you know, trusted people in my life, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to actually start my own business and see how that goes. And and my little sister gave me sort of the best advice. She was like, because I was like, should I go just get a job or should I like sit out on my own? And she goes, well, you know, you could try to go on your own. And in six months, if it's not working, just go get a job. And I was mm. like, it hadn't dawned on me that I could do that. A. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thank you, and, little sister. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then... Um, so I, I set out on my own, and what I thought my um, offerings and my services were going to be uh, have changed at least five or six times. Um, this is a message that I have specifically for like entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, mm -hmm. but I think it probably applies to this topic in some way. Um, look, get get, you know, all the advice you can get from other people about how to do X, Y, or Z. But if you find something that works for you, mm. do that, right? Even if people are saying you should never, you know, fill in the blank, right? Like you should never tell people your prices before you actually talk to them, or you should always do blah, blah, blah. If you're if that's working for you, then do it. And 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 just because somebody else had something work for them doesn't mean that um, that it's going to work for you. And so, anyway, so I'm saying that to say, yeah, I've I've what my offerings and sort of what I've chosen to focus on as a coach and how I'm structuring that. Um, I've changed that multiple times, um, and it's often because I set out doing something that was sort of based on the advice of somebody else, mm -hmm. and and then and I tried it out, and I was like, wow, that that really doesn't work for me, or I really actually don't want to operate that way, or uh, whatever. So that's kind of the most recent example, and and the one thing that allows me to that has allowed me to do that is continuously bringing the mindset of what am I learning from this, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, it's, it takes zero intellectual efforting on my part to just um, wall, <laughs> what I would call wallow in my failures, right? Mm -hmm. Like if something's not working, it just is like the easiest thing in the world to go, oh, woe well, is me, it didn't work, this is too hard, blah, 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 right. right? But if I can go, okay, that didn't work, now let me actually put some time and energy into going, what did I learn from this? Right? What is there to do differently or better or not do in the future that will have me be successful? And that takes oh, wow. work, right? And most people... I don't, I don't know if most people, but a lot of people skip that step because it does take some intellectual efforting. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a lot of self-reflection and the ability to kind of be honest with yourself, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I wanted to uh, talk about the LGBT community. That's primarily our listening audience. Yeah. And what's it like working with our community? What are some things that pop up for you? Why is it important to you to, as um, a gay man to reach out to the community? Mm -hmm. So the First thing that I would say is because um, our contribution matters. 
right? Like what the queer community has to contribute to the organizations, the workplaces, the relationships that we are a part of really matters. Um, and I think it matters because there, I don't know about y'all, but if you, if you've engaged with your queerness with any amount of, uh, I'd say authenticity and mm -hmm. integrity, um, you are likely a more compassionate mm. right. and courageous person than sort of your the status quo. And, and, and that's just kind of like without having any, any coaching or mentoring or support from, mm -hmm. uh, from someone. Um, when a queer person can see that about themselves and see that, oh, actually the world needs more of those things, um, and, and, you know, we're humans, right? Not just queer people, but humans aren't always good at seeing those things as contributions and knowing how to contribute them. This yes. Is, I know that's all kind of conceptual stuff, but it sounds like it's landing. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's so beautiful. Yeah, totally. And you know what? I find that it's really easy for us to be compassionate to other people out there in the world. But when it comes to self-compassion, it's a little bit more, we have to struggle. It's a little bit more of a struggle. What are your thoughts on, on self-compassion? Uh, 100%, 100%. Um, and I would also say that you, you actually have to have both. Um, like you don't actually get the richness and fullness of compassion for another human being unless you have it for yourself. So there's three parts of compassion for me. Okay. okay. So the first one is um, the ability to give space to something, right? So to just allow something to be. Uh, the second piece of compassion is... Oh, shoot, I forgot what the second piece is. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, I'll come back to that if I can remember. <laughs> I don't have any notes here with me. But, uh, yeah, the third piece is, uh, is humanity, right? Is seeing that my suffering, right, isn't really, like, if you strip everything away, really isn't different than anybody else's suffering. It's still suffering. Now, the content might be different. It might be different to... Like the suffering of a queer person or a person of color mm -hmm. or, um, you know, whatever is, has a, a particular flavor to it and has maybe a different history to it. But human suffering is human suffering. Yes. And when I can sort of grant space to my own human suffering, I increase my ability to grant space to someone else's. Uh, here's an example. So um, I got fired from the yoga studio that I just mentioned, right? Okay. And it was the one of the most painful things I'd ever been through. Now, I'm not yet to the point where I'm like, getting fired was the best thing that ever happened. Right? Like that's, <laughs> sometimes you see people post that. But I tell right. you what, as I have developed compassion for myself in what it's been like to really have my heart broken in that way. I have become a very useful human being for others who wow. have been through that, that situation. Do you know, like I can conceptually provide compassion for, I don't know, some, you know, if you've been through something that I've never been through, if you're, mm -hmm. you know, your mom has had, cancer or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can try to bring compassion to it. But when I've, I've been through the eye of the needle myself and generated compassion for myself, there's a deep sort of connective compassion that can happen between me and another human being. So that's what I mean when I say like they're, they're interconnected, right? They're really a self-compassion and compassion for others. It, it really does sort of arise together. 
That's so beautiful. Nice. Wow. Well, let's talk about some practical things. And okay. I know you have a lot of, like, just scrolling around your Instagram, you talk a lot about and use a lot of ha hashtags for habits, changing uh, yeah. habits. What are some of the ruts that we find ourselves in, in habits so that we can move forward? And what's some good habits that we can incorporate? Okay, so as I talk to people about habits, one of the things that is <laughs> with adult Americans... <laughs> that I, everyone has some sort of complaint about is sleep. Oh my god! Ooh, yeah. Like they can't the get themselves. Of sleep. Yeah. Let's get into it, please. Yeah, like they can't get themselves to go to sleep. They, uh, you know, they have a hard time going to sleep. They, you know, they, you know, they get go into scroll holes for hours when they know they should be, you know, um, turning out the lights and whatever, right? Um, so that's like a big one. And the, you know, when I'm, if I'm working with somebody on coming up with uh, bedtime and uh, morning routine, right? Because that's kind of the, that winds up being the thing to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of practical things that I have people do. Uh, the first is, is to really deal with your environment. Right, so I think people think a lot of their habits as being um, just a function of their willpower, right? Their their self discipline. Um, there's the the book that I think a lot of people have read. It's a uh, James Clear's Atomic Habits, and um, he says you don't rise to the level of your goals; you fail to the level of your systems. Mm, interesting. Wow. So the when I'm looking with people at, at their habits and let's say like their bedtime routines, the first thing I have them look at is the physical environment, right? How is their bedroom set up? What, how is sort of just their, their physical world set up such that either it pulls for them going to bed or not? I had this client who she was like, she was kind of talking about how hard it is for her to go to sleep, blah, 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 and that she watches TV until she, you know, is just cross-eyed tired, and then she, you know, will fall asleep, da, da, da. And when I kind of poked at her a little bit, she, I, I, I didn't realize this when she was saying it, but she was actually in her bed watching TV, which, mm -hmm. not from a place of judgment, but <laughs> um, that's like the cardinal sin of, like, sleep hygiene. No TVs in the, in the, uh, in the bedroom. What about just a little bit? Just Absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's a hard no -go, okay, I guess I'm throwing away the TV in my bedroom, man. <laughs> Look, it's like it's like how you can. It's just going to make it that much harder for yourself. People who are really this is uh, this is like if you can get your head around this, this can transform everything. So people who are really disciplined, if you really look at their lives they set up their environment as much as they can so that they don't have to be disciplined. Oh, wow. That's important. That yeah. right? just hit me where I lived. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yay, good. Yeah, so take out, the, take the television out of the room so you don't, so it's not even a choice you have to think about. What about if I just unplug it? Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, Put a look. sheet over it. There you go. Cody, Cody, you're a grown ass man. <laughs> I know. Um, you know, I want to ask you also yeah. about mornings because you talk a lot about the importance of mornings. I know I'm somewhat of a late morning person. I know Cody is a, not a morning person. I'm a late at afternoon all. person. <laughs> what is the what is so good about the mornings and why do you profess mornings as getting being productive and getting things done? Yeah. Let's see. There's a lot I could say about that. Um, well, actually, I first want to give a caveat. And so it, I've actually changed my thinking a little bit about mornings. Ooh, um, it's looking better for you, Cody. <laughs> I know, right? I'm excited now. <laughs> and, you know, honestly, it's really just so that Ultimately, ultimately, it's so that um, people aren't trying to 
you know, put, what is it? Put a square peg into a round hole. Yes. You know, there's, yeah. there's some work out there that says that there are different sort of, um, body types mm -hmm. like, um, so Ayurveda, have you guys ever heard of Ayurveda? Yes. It's like a sister science to yoga. And in um, Ayurveda, there's three sort of energy body types. They're called doshas. And one of them is like a really grounded type. And one is a really fiery type. And one is a really sort of airy type. And um, each one of the body types sort of sleep in different ways and need different amounts of sleep. Like, so the more grounded type, they tend to be really deep sleepers. They fall asleep very quickly. They just sort of generally need more sleep. The airy, airier types, they, um, they tend to sleep very lightly um, and wake up very easily. And, and, and so, you know, what Ayurveda says is that depending on sort of your energy type and sort of how you sleep and da 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 uh, you might sh you know m might not need sh you shouldn't think too much about what you're doing with your mornings like just let your mornings be sort of a a spacious time where you kind of do whatever you intuitively want to do that time at that time and maybe the afternoons are really what you need to be thinking about okay. now with all of that being said uh, I like to th think about when I'm working with people, um, I sometimes will think about a morning routine as being an experiment, right? So rather than thinking about it as being like, okay, I'm going to find something that I can do for the rest of my life, um, to pick a discrete period of time, like, like 30 days, let's say. I actually used to do a program called Magic Mornings. And what I would tell people is like, I actually don't want you to take this on for the rest of your life. What I want you to have your attention on is discovering something for yourself. Like actually seeing like, okay, what works for me? Where, what produces value for me? What doesn't work for me? And um, it's kind of like... Um, you know, there are those elimination diets out there, mm -hmm. um, like Whole30 and things like that. And the purpose of an elimination diet is not to lose weight or any of that sort of toxic diet culture stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It's about identifying um, food sensitivities, right? Mm -hmm. And so how I think about a morning routine is like commit to something for a certain chunk of time. Right. And then see like, okay, what does it take for me to keep my commitment to myself to wake up at this specific time, right? To do so in magic mornings, people had to set a specific bedtime and a specific um, uh, wake up time. Mm -hmm. They had to commit to moving their bodies for 30 minutes. Uh, there was a set of tools around meditation, self uh, declarations and affirmations. And, um, and then there was a 30-minute sort of group coaching call that we would do together. And, uh, you know, and people would finish those 30 days and then and they would have the chance at the end of the program to say, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. Like moving my body first thing when I get out of bed, that really works for me, right? But then I actually really want to do, you know, X, Y, or Z, right? Like I'm, I actually am going to just start my work day from right there or mm -hmm. whatever. So that's kind of... The where I, side of it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. See and, what works. Yeah, and and do it like really try something first, right? Because I also I, there's two schools of thoughts. Like, and I think I, I have a foot in two different worlds right now. On the one hand, yeah, maybe there are sort of the Ayurvedic sort of body energy types, um, but I've also had people go through magic mornings who started off saying, I'm not a morning person. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that I would say to people is, stop saying that. <laughs> right. I guess I have to stop saying that then. <laughs> but, no, it's not like it's a bad thing to say that. But look, if you're going to be in a morning 
program. Oh, okay. We well, gonna right? I'm, I'm never going to do that. So and you're, <laughs> I can say it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You look, if you're listening to this and you're like, I know that shit isn't for me, then don't. Like, give yourself that, like, grace. But if you, if you do want to sort of experiment and see what's possible, then you can go, okay, what if I just for 30 days let go of the point of view that I'm a morning person and I just don't focus on that at all? Mm. It's all um, about your mindset. Yeah. I love that. I love that yeah. so much. So speaking of these programs and just in general, how do you stay motivated to pursue? What are your tips for staying motivated to pursue your dreams and to really commit to these types of programs to where you're discovering more about yourself? Mm. Um, so the first thing is community. Uh, get get around people who are in a growth game, right? Get around people who are uh, committed to living really badass lives, mm-hmm. and um, and know that like that y'all you know that there's a a common sort of mindset of like being real about what it takes to to live a really great life. That's the first thing I think of. Wow. Um, Cause I, me by myself, I will tell y'all me by myself, if I'm just left to my own devices, all I want to do is lay on the sofa <laughs> and watch SVU <laughs> and drink a blue moon. Like okay. that is like heaven to me. Right. Which is fun, but you're not going to get anything done. Right? <laughs> totally fun. And no judgment. Like if, if you yeah. want to do that from time to time. Right. Yeah. And Absolutely. Like I said, left to my own devices, I would do that seven nights a week. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's that's why I like having people around you is the first thing. The second thing I would say is have a really clear um, why for yourself. Like, what what is important to you about what it is that you're out to accomplish? Like, and why is it important to you? Like. You've got to get something that sort of reaches into your heart and makes you feel something. Um, So I'll give an example is I have um, uh, one area of life that I have a pretty high degree of discipline and motivation around is the way that I eat. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't give a shit about having a six pack. (laughs) <laughs> I just don't. And I Sorry. wish I did, wow. but I don't. What I do care about and sort of what I discovered sort of in my journey in practicing how it is that I eat is how much food impacts my mood. Okay. Yeah. Right? How much it impacts my mental health. And, you know, there was uh, probably about Six years ago, I, I did an elimination diet where for 30 days, I, I gave up sugar and flour. And, um, and I'm already stressed out from hearing uh-oh. that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> then it might not be for you. But here's yeah. what I'll tell you what happened is, by the way, everything I say is just my experience. I feel like yeah, I need to kind of ongoing right. and give that caveat. There's nothing that I sort of that I do in my own life that I'm like, this is the prescriptive way to live a great life, right? These are all just possibilities. Stopped eating sugar and flour for 30 days. About 15 days in, my experience of just sort of my energy, it all of a sudden became it was like this. This is the sound that it made. It went. Hmm. Oh wow. <laughs> I, I didn't realize the degree to which I was walking around with um, sort of low level anxiety all the time. Like I thought that that was just what it was like to be alive. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like normal. Yeah. Yeah. And that sort of level of anxiety went from an eight, to, like on a scale of one to 10, from like an eight to a one. Wow. And that's a whole new meaning for low vibrational plates right there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, totally. And so, so that all of a sudden became my motivation for eating well, you know, now look, I'm not, I am not going to go the rest of my life 
and never have another taco or another chocolate croissant or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. I, I do eat that stuff from time to time. Um, but it's pretty easy for me to get re-motivated and recommitted um, given that I'm so clear about what my why is. Love that. Nice. Nathan, we could talk to you all afternoon, but that's all the time we have. You've, get, you've given us some really great things to consider. And how do you want um, for our audience to follow you? What's the best way to um, get in touch with you? Yep. So they can go to my habits coach on Instagram. Um, and then on LinkedIn is sort of where I'm sort of spending the most of my time right now. So if they just look up Nathan Harrington coaching on LinkedIn, uh, that's a great way to contact me as well. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Nathan. Oh my gosh, this is so, so fun, y'all. Thank you so much for having me. Y'all are great. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing your wisdom. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Cody, congratulations on the premiere episode of our brand new show of a certain age. So exciting. This is such a labor of love, and I've enjoyed every single second. So, me yes. too. And we have so many upcoming guests and shows to look forward to in the coming weeks. We are here every Wednesday Every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts of a certain age, we want to let our audience know about a secret on our show. Ooh, a little secret? A little secret. Our theme song, many of you may not know this, but is sung by our very own Cody Marie Stoggett. Yes. And congratulations. I love the song so much. Thank you so much. Hopefully it'll be out on Spotify, iTunes, anywhere you can get your music from very soon. And yeah, it was so great. I enjoyed it. I love writing. I love singing. And it's just beautiful. So I'm. it's a, got a great message too. So Great message. Very positive. And and this kind of got you back into singing again after a while. Yes, definitely. I had not been singing for since the pandemic, really, because I had been going out and doing things, live things and things of that nature and really just honing my craft. But then the pandemic hit and I don't know what happened. I just it just went downhill. So this got me back to my passion and I really reconnected with it. So it's been a beautiful thing. It's a great song. I can't wait till it's out. We'll update our audience when it is. You can follow Of A Certain Age on our Instagram account. Just go to Of A Certain Age Pod, P-O-D, Of A Certain Age Pod, and you can keep up with new episodes. But new episodes are coming out every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. We'll be there. We'll be chatting. We'll be having lovely conversations, and we can't wait for you all to join us. And what are we doing, Cody? We're, We're living, living out loud. Out loud.